and another male student in a hallway of Great Mills High School just before classes begun. The victims of the shooting were transported by uh, EMS and uh, the one male student went to MedStar St. Mary's Hospital is in stable condition. The female student was transported uh, to shock trauma facility is in critical condition and I am told that at 10.41 a.m. this morning, the shooter was confirmed deceased at uh, Charles uh, Regional Medical Center in La Plata. When the shooting took place, our school resource officer who was stationed inside the school was alerted to the, the event and the shots being fired. Uh, he pursued the shooter, engaged the shooter, during which that engagement he fired a round at the shooter Simultaneously, the shooter fired around as well. So in the hours to come, in the days to come, through detailed investigation, we will be able to determine um, if our school resource officer's round struck the shooter. Uh, the, the school resource officer is uninjured and was not struck by any firearm projectile. Um, the SRO, uh, as uh, with our detectives now, as are witnesses to the event, they are still at the high school um, in a secured area. The remainder of the students from Great Mills High School, as our protocol and process and training, uh, we brought buses in and had them removed to the Forest Tech, uh, Tech Center in Leonardtown for parent reunification. That is ongoing as we speak. Uh, I would like to thank my colleagues uh, from the allied agencies that responded. It was a mass response this morning from police, fire, and rescue. Uh, Charles County Sheriff's Office, thank you, Troy Berry. Uh, uh, Major Morris, thank you. Uh, the Maryland State Police uh, responded, as did the NAS Police, Calvert County Sheriff's Office, the FBI, and the ATF. Um, at 1 o'clock, I hope to give you uh, more details about this event. I know that you have a number of questions. And I'm alerted to a number of things that are out there on about the potential relationship between the shooter and any of the victims. At this time, we can't confirm any of that. That is what this investigation will do. Um, and, and at 1 o'clock, I would anticipate being able to release uh, identities of uh, perhaps the shooter and the victims as well. And we would know by then that notification is being made. So again, I wanted to lay the groundwork for what's to come at one o'clock. Can you confirm the identity of the school resource officer? No, I can't, not at this time. There have been threats posted on social media a month or two ago at this school. Can you say anything about if any of what happened today was related to that? So that's part and parcel to the investigation will go on to determine if anything on social media was relevant to this day. Uh, I'm not aware of anything, but again, we're gonna go back and comb through that as well as uh, anybody involved their social media posts. How many resource officers are, are um, uh, with the school? We have a school resource officer assigned to each of our high schools. One? Yes, two. yes. A again, we're not taking questions right now at 1 o'clock. I appreciate it. Thank I you. I would like to mention that the FBI has set up a 1-800 line. It's 1-800-CALL-FBI. If you have additional information that you would like to share with us, we set that 800 line up. Um, so please give us a call there. Uh, I'll see you all again at 1 o'clock. Thank you all very much. Sure, sure. From what you know right now, can you just speak at all a little bit broadly about the, the response to this today, about the school resource officer's response and the police and EMS response in the immediate aftermath? Yeah, so um, as I said, it was a mass response. You know, this is what we train for, this is what we prepare for, and this is what we pray that we never have to do. And on this day, we realize our worst nightmare, that our greatest asset, our children, were attacked in one of our places of uh, a bastion of safety and security, one of our schools. So obviously that's what we're talking about right now across the country. And, you know, the notion of it can't happen here uh, is no longer a notion. Uh, so despite training, you, you hope that you never have to do this, ever. And so now we're a very tight-knit tight, uh, tight -knit community. Um, and so now what I would ask our community to do would be pray for those victims and uh, hope that we can return to some type of normalcy in our schools and in our community. When was your last formal uh, active shooter training exercise? Uh, we train on that all the time and in the schools was in the last calendar year.
In fact, uh, unfortunately, we've had incidences that were people with guns in some of the schools and bomb threats, which we treat similarly. So um, we talk about school safety, school response weekly. In fact, we've done a number of parent meetings, community meetings on this within the last couple months. That's all the questions I'm going to take. I'll see you at one. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, you guys, please don't stand out in the hallways. The division managers here.